that black folks don't have the capacity to somehow think on their own to make their own decisions that's a problem and that's one of the reasons why you hear me pushing back on this trifling narrative because it is a lie It is a lot. Black people are some of the most sophisticated voters in America. Black people know how to make decisions that's in their best interest. Black, see, I am reading Evan McKaylee's book and he talks about black folks voting Republican and then the Republican Party all of a sudden having Herbert Hoover say, oh, we're going to be the Lily White Party. And then black folks all of a sudden go, okay. Okay, all right. I got something for you. We're going to vote Democrat. The FDR comes along. The FDR makes his appeal. Then you have Henry Wallace. Progressive Party, he's, he's running. See, you have all these examples of black people making independent decisions as to who they're going to vote for. And then, of course, um, when the Republican Party just pretty much says, I have, we have no interest in black people. Black folks, okay, well then we're going to exercise our rights and we're going to um, push aggressively for what we want on the Democratic side. So, so let's be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Black people are making conscientious decisions every day about their interests. Let me say that again. Black people are making conscientious decisions. They're making decisions about themselves, about their children. That's what they are doing. Do not allow someone to suggest that black people cannot and are not being smart with their vote. That is a lie. I'll explain this thing further on the Willow Martin Show when we come back. So you, so you got everything? I okay. got everything there. Uh, all right, so uh, now, both arms are missing on each tripod. You gave me one. Dude, you put my, both my arms. I got an arm at home. I'll give you the arm. Can I keep you in the No, arms? No, like, no, no, no. Can you let me finish? Let me finish. Yeah. Yeah. Both tripods don't have arms. You gave me one arm, which means one on one tripod is still missing. I checked the other one. Both are off that one as well. Dude, I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you. 
Don't look at me. Because I know they came with arms. So, if I'm to understand, when you went to New Orleans, you used to call that stuff. When you came back to New Orleans, you missed four plates, four arms, multiple no, batteries. No, I said four plates. What I said four plates. I bought that, you that, two. No, you said four I said plates. I said I was missing three plates. They three plates. Right. Both tripods and then the backup plate. But here's my point. The, okay. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you. So, both tripods. Did my tripods go to you with arms? Yes. Can they come back with arms? Yes. That they, would be nice. So what I'm trying to explain to you is there are no arms on them. So somehow, some way, two arms should be applied to each one of those tripods just so we good. Well, okay. What I'm saying is I didn't lose your arms, number one. Number okay. two, you every, time you, you look, every time you lost dude, your equipment, I didn't see it. Well, because the statute of limitations run no, out. There are no statute of limitations. Hell yeah. Here's the, deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I would have, I would have never I thought find my okay, batteries. Stop. I would have never thought arms would come up missing on a tripod. Me neither. I would have thought you leave arms. So I don't know why you took them off in the first place. I didn't take them off. Okay, no. so how did they come off? I don't know. I gave them tripods. So, how, so wait, a minute. so you telling me? I don't know. Just, no. just arms just popped off. Man, look. Is that what you're telling me? It ain't me just handling your equipment. There's other people with your equipment. Uh, you handle it. You could have took them off. I don't know. But what I'm saying is you're not going to keep coming to me every start, day I'm going to start about with you. I can't find First of all, you the, fact that, the, the fact that the fact that, uh, that, that you said, oh, that's an extra arm. So why, I got an extra arm in my bag, and uh, I tried to give it to you before. So why, well, you first of all, because I don't know. No, because I would have actually thought my arm was actually on my tripod. Well, that's what you get for thinking. Oh, uh, okay. Number two, I don't need those tripods. The, y'all, 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 think, y'all hear that? As long I know as the sound. Think, y'all, I know the sound is on, but this is what happens as right as here. The big tripod is there. The, I need the other big one that the slider goes on. That's in the car. And I took that one. That's all I need. I don't need your other little okay. tripod. I, I need, need you to go find the arms. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ar- searching for anything because I'm done with the <laughs> well, you are searching lost camera. for the arm. I bought you two plates. That's it, though. You found your batteries. <laughs> all right, keep saying. Bro, it took all our batteries. Look, I don't know what's going on with that. All I'm saying is I'm not going to keep, you're not going to keep asking me where's this, yes, where's I am. that, where's this, yes, I am. where's that. I'm not responsible for any find, of that. Find them arms. Number two. Number two. Find the arms. What you train is with them. One fifty-five. So we probably leaving. I'm right with Matt and Kathy now. Matt and Kathy and Tim. We leaving at one thirty. That's so fine. We should get there probably about five six thirty. That's. They won't let us in because they're giving us two hours of our setup, which is tight. Stop. Who are you communicating with? Susan's been communicating with some woman named Lisa or something that works at. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do is see the, okay. the, this is why you should communicate that with me I because Roland could have made the call. I need more time. Well, if you can get us more time, that'd be fantastic. We can get there at ten. Hey, that they say this is arm gate. So <laughs> <laughs> somebody said they don't understand. Somebody said find the damn arms. <laughs> That's they ain't trying to hear. They said find the damn arms. Every day. Henry, I can't find my cufflinks. I know I had them. Where you really? got them. Henry. And then, Henry. I mean, I'm just saying. I ain't never. I, first of all, I'm I've just, never even seen you in a French cuff shirt. I'm just saying. Why would I ask you about some cufflinks? I'm saying. I'm no, seriously. An example. Why would I ask you're you not, about some cufflinks? You're not asking me about it. I'm saying I'm using it as an example. Well, don't use some stupid example that would never be asked. I'm saying I'm using it as an example that every time something's missing. Well, yeah, because all of a sudden when you come up with it and it's missing, you know what? See, y'all? Black people. Right here. Right here. But your track record of losing no, shit. No, no, no. All of a no, sudden, no, no. Oh, First of all, here it is. You know, oh, oh, here what, it is. Well, I, all it I know was is this thing. All I know is this here. I'm not touching it. Better find them arms. All I know, better find those arms. See, you let people use your stuff, and they bring it back raggedy. Yeah. Go find them arms. <laughs> you better go find them arms. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. So, this, this crazy 
nonsense with this election could probably give you a headache. Could give you a headache. And then, of course, you got Trump going to Detroit. Arms are not in the car, folks. Going to Detroit, and he's going to do a ride around or a walk around. I don't even know what y'all want to call it. With Ben Carson. Gotcha. What's funny about this is. Y'all know Trump ain't serious about black people. I know this. You know this. Y'all know he ain't serious. I'm not even confused about this. Not even confused. So, and here's the deal. If you were serious if you were serious If you were serious, you would not be going to Detroit on Labor Day weekend. Y'all, who the hell is paying attention on Labor Day weekend? Nobody. Nobody. It's like, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? All right, this is the segment we had this morning on TV One with Pastor Mark Burns. Still stand behind the message uh, that that picture represent, but I uh, obviously I offended so many people, and the blackface uh, is offensive. Um, so I erroneously, when I posted it, and of course I didn't make it; it was uh, already on Twitter, it was already on social media. Um, but I really uh, wanted to. Uh, I thought the picture represented uh, the message that, the, that that stated blacks have been used by the Democratic Party. Um, and that we, in, a many, in many cases, are not operating at the same level that other ethnic groups are in this country. And yet we've been voting in mass. And yes, we have progressed a lot. We have, uh, we've gained a lot, um, but we're still not moving at the same speed that other ethnic groups are in this country. And I believe the, 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 the voting block of the, of, of the African-American community it's already, it already belongs, at least in the minds of the Democrats, already belong to uh, the Democratic Party. But Pastor Burns, but Pastor Burns. I'm of the opinion that we should make the Democrats fight for 
uh, with votes. I want to go back to uh, our interview with Pastor Mark Burns. We lost the satellite there, uh, so we now have him on the phone. Uh, so, Pastor Burns, uh, as we were talking, um, for your apology, um, was this uh, asked for by the Trump campaign, or did you make it on your own uh, accord? Absolutely not asked uh, by the campaign, um, not at all. Um, I, I'm, really not, I, I'm a pastor, um, contrary to some maybe in the public, uh, you know, general public may not believe, but I truly love people. Um, I truly believe that when, um, when there's a test that is done, uh, even though if it was not even intentional, um, if there's an offense done, I believe it's our biblical obligation to uh, to offer the apology. Um, and so, again, I, I, I truly apologize for the offensive blackface image of, of that cartoon and the, um, uh, the depiction of, of, um, of the blackface is offensive uh, by yourself. And um, as an African-American man in America, um, I, 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 don't, I don't stand by uh, anyone portraying himself in a blackface, but the message um, that I intended, um, I still stand behind. Um, but my apology is because I think my message got lost uh, in, in, the, in the translation um, of the of the, uh, the methodology to get to overshadow the message. Um, and so I, I don't stand behind the methodology. So obviously in hindsight, if I could do it again, I would still get the message out there, but use a different methodology. You, you made a point about Democrats and uh, them taking a black vote for granted, but here's the reality. Republicans have not made a consistent effort uh, to actually go after the black vote. There are examples of Republicans who have done that. George Vinovich, the late George Vinovich, who was, of course, the mayor of Cleveland, governor of Ohio, who was a U.S. senator from Ohio, sat down with, worked with, communicated with, partnered with, and you know, he ran for the U.S. Senate, got something around 40 percent of the black vote. So, so I think one of the mistakes that Republicans make, whether they're black or white, is to somehow uh, put it on black folks as if black folks are dumb, as if we don't make smart choices, as if we're not making informed choices. Black folks are making informed choices, and that is when one party routinely ignores them, then where else are you going to turn to? Well, you know, I 100% agree with you, Roland. Um, that the Republican Party in mass has not um, really um, many of the policies that uh, the Republican Party in, in, in general um, has not been um, you know designed uh, you know for uh, specifically for African Americans in this community um, and in general the Republican Party um, not saying that all Republican candidates but in mass the Republican Party. Um, has not been after uh, the African American vote as the Democratic Party has done, and I do agree with you um, that, um, and, and, and large partly, it's almost as though that the the 22 parties you, you, you're not really giving the African American uh, community a a choice um, to, to decide because you're going to support the party that you feel um, that has policies that are related to your community. Uh, but the problem with that is is that the policies um, within the Democratic Party is, is it is color specific, uh, race specific, that it, it's not creating the wealth and prosperity as a group um, as it should be. But, but here's the deal, though. I, mean, look, I, 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 look, I, I get that point, but again, uh, it's a lot of broke white folks in this country as well who also keep voting for Republicans. Uh, and so let's not act as if all of a sudden, uh, you know, black folks are uh, voting for Democrat. Uh, again, last question uh, for you. Trump is sitting down uh, with uh, this pastor in Detroit uh, on uh, Sunday, excuse me, on Saturday. And so my question is, when is Donald Trump actually going to sit down with black journalists, folks who actually cover these issues on a daily basis uh, to take those questions? Well, you know, I believe, um, as I said to you before, um, as we gather up the plan, um, I do believe that there's a time um, for everything. And I, and I believe... Uh, and we've got about 70 days. I think it's like 69 days left before the election, so uh, time is kind of running out. I mean, 
All right, well, Pastor Mark Burns, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, sorry we had the technical difficulties, but certainly thank you uh, for joining us right here on uh, News 1 on TV 1. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need. All right, all right, y'all. So that was um, Pastor Mark Burns. 844-736-7474. 844-736-7474. Take your phone calls when we come back. This is Roland Martin Show. Back in a moment. All right, folks, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show, 844-736-7474, 844-736-7474. You know, um, I'm trying to tell you, this, uh, you 
you could, you literally, if you took this election to a Hollywood screenwriter, if you took that to them, they would say, Nah, this is simply too crazy to be believed. Just absolutely too crazy to be believed. But this is what you're dealing with. This is what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with is an unbelievably crazy election that is feel that, that is filled with race that is filled with craziness and crazies I said crazies and We, we somehow are supposed to buy into this notion that, oh no, this person really has what it takes. To be president of the United States, not even for a second. Not even for a second do I even think that Donald Trump can sit in the old office. And I keep telling folks, that this is not about party. This ain't, for me, this ain't got nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. Let me say it again. This has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. This has to do with very simply with the presidency Folks, the presidency, this is about can this person sit across from world leaders and represent you? Can this person represent you? That is the problem. That's the problem.
That's the problem. You cannot explain to me in any reasonable way how he can sit across from a world leader. You can't. I, 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 I would love to hear that explanation. I can't fathom that being the case. I simply cannot. So you heard Pastor Mark Burns, Mark Burns apologize. Do you accept it? Or do you think that was by design? 844-736-7474-844-736-7474-844-736-7474. Love to get your thoughts. Give me a call. Love to hear from you. I mean, this, this, this is just... As, has anybody else asked the question, when will this end? When will this end? Oh, because man, this has been a painful, crazy... You got white nationalists running around here emboldened. Emboldened by Trump. I mean, there, there's a full man crush embrace. of Donald Trump. I mean, th they are making no bones about it. They, they, they say, hey, baby, you are our guy. Oh, we want you, Donald Trump. We don't want anybody else. We want you. And if, if there's anything that white supremacists love, I am going to run in the opposite direction. There is no way in the world that I am going to support somebody who can't even explain to me in a basic, fundamental way aspects of our democracy. I can't. Can't do it. The guy has hired as his campaign CEO a dude who former staffer said ran meetings like he was a white supremacist. And that's who you want as your president? I'm done. I'm done. This is Roller Martin Show. Oh. Uh. No, debates are not in a few days. The debates are in October.
to America's veterans, a promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earn. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. It's time to get back to the issues that matter. Let's get back to the Roland Martin Show. All right, folks, welcome back to the Roll Martin Show, 844-736-7474. Did y'all catch Reverend Wendell Anthony today on News One Now? Oh, my God. Man, did he go in on Trump going to Detroit? I just want to play it for y'all. Buckle up. Wendell Anthony, he is the president of the Detroit NAACP. Uh, Pastor Anthony, good to see you. First and foremost, uh, what do you make of uh, Donald Trump coming to the Motor City uh, to have this conversation uh, with an African-American church? Uh, good morning, uh, Roland. Good to be with you. Uh, first of all, the doors of the church are always open, even to those who have certain hidden interests. This is tantamount to a wolf. Uh, coming to a sheep farm saying, let me lead you uh, to greener pastures. Uh, the Bible is very clear about that in terms of by their fruit you shall know them. This is the same Donald Trump uh, who has not come to the NAACP National Convention, the Urban League Convention, uh, the uh, National Action Network Convention. This is the same Donald Trump uh, that has given uh, President Obama uh, the birth of title uh, since he was in office. This is the same Donald Trump that has never, to my knowledge, been to an HBCU uh, for a presentation, who has never uh, joint ventured, uh, to my knowledge, with African-American business people and entrepreneurs. He brags about uh, the towers that he builds. How many African-American construction leaders have you had? How many folk have you joint ventured with? Let's look at your procurement plan. Let's talk about development in the city. He is cherry-picking, Roland. He is cherry-picking individuals by which he can use them as a bridge by which to go and to come to us. This is a strategy. This is not new. This is a part of what was called back in the day the Southern strategy, in which 
Richard Milhouse Nixon, as you recall, used a strategy to talk about blacks, to talk around them, but not to talk to them, inferring that somehow they needed law and order, uh, that we needed states' rights. And it was a policy that was used to divide the Southern Democrats uh, from voting for the Democratic Party, and it has sustained itself even to today. If Donald Trump is really concerned about the African-American community, where is he on the extension and the retooling of the Voting Rights Act? How yeah. come he's never spoken about that? You've got a question for uh, Reverend Anthony. Um, first of all, he's... How come he's not interviewing with you, a real journalist? How come he's not interviewing with Karen Hall or Joy Reid? Journalists who can probe, who can ask the questions, did he, in fact, set up a mechanism by which uh, certain questions could be asked? Did he say we can't go over this yard in terms of asking certain questions? I would beg to find out if, in fact, this is a legitimate kind of, of an interview or is this is just an inter-skew, skewing the issues as it relates to our community. Do you uh, know uh, Bishop Wayne T. Jackson of uh, good, Great Faith Ministries in Detroit? I do. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and that's who he's going to be talking to uh, on Saturday. Uh, he's going to be doing so uh, on Pastor Mark Burns' um, Impact heard, Network. I heard it, it's, it's, he's trying to make an impact. I'm not mad at the brother Roland. I mean, he is in the news business, and I'm not mad at him. Go ahead and do what you want to do. However, do not allow this guy to use us as a leverage to be able to engage the African-American community. He is not speaking to our interests. He is not interested in us. He's interested in our vote. Here's a guy talking about, if, if y'all elect me, I'm going to get 95% of the black vote in my second term. Well, that means that you're going to do better than uh, President Obama relative to the black vote in, in your second term in terms of coming from 1% or less than to 95%. By their fruits, you shall know them. This is the same Donald Trump that said he didn't want black folk counting his money. But the only folk he wanted counting his money were little short guys with yarmulkes on. We know what that means. He does not have a record rolling of dealing with, of addressing, of being sensitive to the interests of black people and brown people. Let him come to Linwood uh, and Davidson. Let him come to Mack and Bewick. Let him come to Joy Road uh, and to, to Greenfield. Come into the heart of the community. Don't cherry pick a congregation and don't cherry pick a minister to use your misinformation and your misconstrued representation as if you were really concerned about us. You ain't been concerned about us to this point. What in the world makes you think that we believe you're going to be concerned about us going towards the future. It is not the other candidate that said, get them out of here, uh, punch them in the face. Uh, if, I, if they were back in the day uh, when I was coming up, uh, we know how to treat these people. And he's pointing to African-Americans who, in fact, he's pointing to a guy saying, there's my African. How insulting that is. What does it take for us to recognize that this guy is not for us. He's for our vote. If you look at his record, his record is very clear. If you don't know me by now, then you will never, ever, never know me. Well, we know you by now, Mr. Trump, and we say that you are running a scam, and this is the biggest joke, this is the biggest scam since P.T. Barnum was running his circus and saying there's a sucker born every moment. Reverend, Trump as the ringmaster. Reverend Anthony, do you um, plan on showing up Saturday and others? I don't think so, Roland. I'm, I'm going to be visiting my family, having a good time, and I'm not changing my plans to be entertained by Donald Trump. If I want to be entertained by Donald Trump, I can turn on News 1 and watch you run some radio or some TV clips from some of the nonsense that he's been saying from one end of the country to the other. All right, Reverend Wendell Anthony here of the Detroit NAACP. We appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Well, that was Reverend Anthony out of Detroit. Lord, my man was a little fired up, don't y'all think? Don't y'all think? 
Uh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. See, this election got everybody fired up. Way to go. I mean, got everybody. Got everybody upset. But he's right. He's right. Don't just all of a sudden holler at me. Don't just all of a sudden. Act like, well, I guess I go ahead and talk to y'all black people. I, I keep telling people to, to don't get confused about what's going on. D don't get confused about what's going on. So you can't get confused about what's going on because then you lose perspective. See, I, I ain't getting emotional. I ain't, I'm not getting emotional about this thing. I recognize what it is. I recognize exactly what is going on. Yeah. I, I see what's going on. We see exactly what's happening. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly what's going on. So, I ain't confused. I hope you're not confused. Let me say this here. If you're in Florida, be sure to vote today. Be sure to vote to. Day. Elections are on the line. Pam Keith is a sister running for the United States Senate out of Florida. That's going on today. Um, you got uh, is it Val Demings running for Congress? Another sister. Running, so we are e we are enmeshed in this election. We, we are in this election, and it's time for us to get it moving. Speaking of moving, we come back. I want to deal with Colin Kaepernick. Did y'all hear what Jerry Rice and Drew Brees had to say? Ooh. Let me just go ahead and hold my tongue right now. This is Roland Martin Show back in a moment. Seven three six seventy four seventy four, and talk to Roland Martin next. We'll be back. I'm a third grade teacher. I'm a school bus driver. I am a parent. I am a teacher's aide, and I agree to be identified as a caring adult who pledges to help bullied students. I will listen carefully to all students who seek my help and act on their behalf to put an immediate stop to bullying. I will work with other caring adults to create a safe learning environment for all the students in my school. In my school. In my Oh. My school. I'm Dennis Van Roekel, president of the National Education Association. Help us create safe, bully-free learning environments for all students. One caring adult can make all the difference. Be that adult and take the pledge at nea.org slash bullyfree. 
Adults have the power to stop bullying in our schools. It starts with me. It starts with me. It starts with me. It starts with me. Bully free. It starts with me. Visit nea.org slash bully free. A message from the National Education Association. There's another network calling. All right, man. <coughs> All right, folks. Welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, ooh, Jerry Rice. So, you know, Colin Kaepernick has gotten all these people upset. Uh, because he chose to sit down doing the national anthem. So check this out. So now, now they tripping because Colin Kaepernick um, had a news. Well, he spoke to the press the other day, wearing a Malcolm X hat and a T-shirt that depicted the meeting between Malcolm X and Fidel Castro. Yes, I'm being very serious. I'm being very serious. They are now mad about that. Well, but some other people ain't too happy with Jerry Rice. Ain't happy at all. At all, at all, at all. Um, Jerry Rice made a crazy comment where he, 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 so check this out. Jerry Rice Hall of Famer, San Francisco 49er, decided to get in on the act by tweeting this. All lives matter. So much going on in this world today. Can we all just get along? Colin, I respect your stance but don't disrespect the flag. 
and Lord, they have been lighting him up ever since then. Now, check this out. Drew Brees, New Orleans Saints, he tweets, on this issue, I agree with his protest. I don't agree with his method. Read the article. I said it three times. That was him talking about uh, to ESPN. Drew Brees, compassion, according to ESPN, compassionate supporter of the military. I got a problem with the method of his protest. Really? That reminds me of somebody. Y'all ready for this? That reminds me of a certain activist. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what Dr. King said, quote, I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. Who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. Who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a, quote, more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering then outright rejection. Let me go back to that line, the white moderate prefers a negative peace who says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of Direct action. Tell me, Drew Brees, how in the world you can say, I agree with his protest, but I don't agree with his method. Show me, Drew Brees, then, what's your method? I'll wait. 844-736-7474. Uh, Sam in Atlanta, what's your comment? Sam? Yes, what's your comment? I don't know why everybody is being divided. This is sounds like Trump is a joke. If people check his track record and go back when he was the commissioner of the USFL, back when it was a thriving league. No, 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 no. He, no, no. he was a commissioner of the USFL. He was one of the owners. But once he got involved, did it? Nope. 
and, and it's just it's funny. We're being divided by this joke called Trump, and we have these people who are selling out for the money to support this guy and to get the black vote. And to me, as long as we keep dividing amongst our own race, it's only going to keep getting worse, Roland. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Gwen in Alabama. Good morning, Roland. How are you? Great. You know, I had to call in. I'm sorry, Roland. The only way I stop calling your show is Roland Moore and got to say, Miss Gwen, don't call my show anymore. But look, I got to get on this with Coleman. Where were all these athletes when this disrespect for Donald Trump at Where's your birth certificate, boy, to President Obama? Because to me, that's what he was saying. You don't belong in that office. You don't belong in the highest office. Who is you to be president of the United States, boy, to President Barack Obama? Where was these athletes? Why didn't they come out and stand up and fight for my black president? What was all these? Where was Jerry Rice then? Jerry Rice, why was she not on, on, on TV or wherever or, or putting out an editorial about this man degrading? Questioning the first black president citizenship. How dare these athletes? And you know, it, it, it's, it's one thing that I don't agree with Colin about counting it. Yes, I want everybody to hear this. Hillary Clinton did not call black men predators. No, she did not. No, she said she was speaking about gang bangers and drug cartels. And you are darn right. I do not want gang bangers in my neighborhood persuading my young nephews and brothers into drug dealing. No, I don't. And I agree with Hillary on that. They are and they were super predators. And whether you being a black man like that term or not, you got to deal with that. If you want to be associated with gang bangers and drug cartels, then that's on you. But don't put that on Hillary because she never called black men super predators. Go back and look at the old our editorial, and you would see who she was talking about. Now I gotta go to Pastor Burns because I tweeted him a long message yesterday. I let him know, as a black woman, I am truly offended that you put Hillary in black face. You are demeaning. You need to get on your knees because the God you pray to, I pray to God that I'm not praying to that God that you're praying to. I'm not questioning your association with God, but a tree is known by the fruit it bears. And anybody that's associated with Donald Trump, to me, as a black minister, you are disgraced in the eyes of man, my eyes, and God, because you are putting all black people down. You stand there and you allow Donald Trump to say that we are all living in squalor. You can walk down out of the neighborhoods before being shot. How dare you? How dare you, as a black man, even stand up? All right. And how Minister, allow him to even come in this congregation. Gwen, I got to go to a break. I appreciate it, Gwen. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. 844-736-7474. Back on the Roland Martin Show in a moment.
Welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. So, I, folks, I am amazed at all these folks. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm disagreeing. We, we, Colin, I, I, I agree with your stance. I, 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 I agree with your position. I, 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 uh, but I don't like how you're doing it. Well, show me how to do it then. Show me where you stand. Show me where you stand. Guess what? They don't. They're just saying stuff. Vaughn and Phoenix, you're on Roland Martin Show. What's your comment? Well, thanks for having me on the show. In, re in response to everybody getting all up in arms about Colin Kaepernick sitting down during the uh, national anthem being spoken out, what they're failing to do is acknowledge why he's doing this and acknowledge that there really is a problem. Just like you just got done stating, they're not offering any type of alternate uh, solution as to what we should be doing. It seems like they're good and content as long as we just shut up and take whatever oppressive system is in place. And that's basically what they're saying is, hey, you know what? Either shut up or take it or move out of our country. And it's starting to make me feel like some of the other races and ethnic, ethnic groups in our country who have united and created their own economies, they did so because they had their own languages. Now, the black people, we got our own black national anthem, lift every voice and sing. Well, we need to get a, a, a flag to associate with our anthem because this country continues to show us under this red, white, and blue flag that they don't care about the things that we care about. We're trying to vote in presidents who have policies where our issues are not even on the radar. For Donald Trump, you know, and, and Hillary, I mean, my, my honest opinion about her is that she says whatever she needs to say. She's been caught in a million lives. She say whatever she needs to say to get the vote that she needs to get. So let's just keep it 100. None of them care about what the black community is concerned about. And what we need to do is be concerned about ourselves, migrate together. I'm not saying be segregated on a legal level, like back in the Jim Crow days, but we, need, we were stronger during those days of segregation as far as education, as far as our economy, we were stronger and we were an actual community. Those are, those are my comments. All right. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Uh, let's Thank go you. to um, Rudy in Florida. Rudy, you're on the Roller Martin Show. Uh, good morning, Roller. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people that are sitting there talking about uh, Colin Kaepernick and uh, this flag issue and how disrespecting the flag, disrespecting the country. Well, I'm a two-time combat vet, and uh, nowhere in my oath of enlistment did I have to pledge allegiance to a flag or a national anthem. I was always taught that if you can't recognize the problem, uh, maybe you're part of the problem. It's just too bad that many star athletes in all sports aren't sticking with them. Because if you can think back to the Cleveland Summit, supporting uh, all the top athletes at that time came and question Muhammad Ali on his sincerity of his reasoning for not going to Vietnam. And when he expressed it to him, they understood that he was sincere about it, and they all stood up and supported him. It's just too bad that we can't get that kind of support for Colin Kaepernick today. Well, first of all, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, that's no shock to me. you have not seen the kind of support. Because Ali didn't have much support. And see, all the people, oh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you, but I don't, I don't like your method. Well, but show me yours. I mean, Angelou Ellis is out there trying to get that Confederate emblem off the Mississippi State flag. Where are you, Jerry Rice? You from Mississippi. Holler at me, let me know, Jet. No, nah, bro, they ain't trying to do that. They ain't trying to do it. Thanks, Rudy. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, Carla, who are, what you got? Hello? 
Yes, you're on the air. What's your name? Jerry from Virginia. Go ahead, Jerry. I'm going to try to be real calm as I can. Thanks for taking my call. Keep up the good work, good work my brother. My thing is this, that everything that Carl Kaepernick say, he is absolutely right. The flag never stands for anything for us African Americans who are trying to be a resistance in this country. The Constitution still consider us three special citizens, brothers and sisters. I want y'all to understand that. And this is the time not to turn our back against our brother Colin Kaepernick that, that in the near future he gonna lose the endorsement. He gonna might he might he might get well most likely he's gonna get suspended and after that he's gonna get kicked out of the NFL. You have be taking a stand. And don't go on Jerry Rice Get about him and uh, our brothers and sisters in New Orleans. You hear what Drew Brees said? I will. I will urge you not support that team. Anybody that go against us as a people that keep on preaching about white supremacy, there's no place. Hey, what had two hundred thousand views? No place. Thank you so very much. Call a name. Where are you from? Yeah, Jay from Nevada. All right, Jay, what's your comment? Well, the flag stands for every American, in my opinion, Roland. But what we need to realize is the, the Republicans, the, the, the politicians, they're, they're the ones that are not putting forth what that flag means to everybody in America. Look at how they 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 take away voting rights from blacks, take away uh, LGBTQ rights, take away women's rights from um, from abortion and, and the and the, uh, um, the what's the PP PPP whatever I forget for the medical thing for the women. Um, but anyway, they're the ones doing this. We're putting them in office. They're the ones that are creating this. It's not the flag. The flag is true to America, and that's what we need to look at. It's who we put in office that that de degrades what that flag means. That means putting Trump into that office in the leadership of our America is what's going to degrade the integrity of our flag. That's going to degrade the integrity, the integrity of our people who belittles people for calling him out on his lies, who, who says Hillary is a bigot when he is the one who has the reputation for, his, for years and years and years of treating people, minorities, immigrants, the, the, the working man in a degrading manner. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. Thank you, Ronnie. But anyway, it's, it's the flag is still there to cover us in the blanket uh, of, of security and, and equality. It's our politicians, people, that we put in office that take away what that flag means. We need to stand and vote and put those right people in the office. That's what you need to do, not the propaganda, not the conspiracy theories, facts, honesty, truth. Who is telling the truth? Two weeks ago, Trump stood up there and said, what do you have to lose, black people? What do you have to lose? Give Trump a chance. Really? Hillary Clinton for 40 years has been helping the less fortunate, women, children, blacks, minorities. They have been trying to pin things on her for 40 years and can't. They use propaganda lies. Look at what uh, Sean Hannity and all these other guys about her joking manner of shaking her head when she got bombarded by questions by a whole bunch of reporters, putting out this, she's medically unfit. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears. 
listen to what's being said. Will you, do you, you tell your children how to treat people, and you're, and you're wanting to have this guy, Trump, be the leader of, 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 of integrity? He has no integrity. And this, this pastor, Mark Burns, this black face of Hillary, this is disgusting. And, and, and even if it was done to Trump, I'd say it's disgusting. This doesn't need to be done. Let's talk about playing the black people for fools. I'm a white guy, and I call Roland's, Roland Martin's show a lot. And I open up my heart, and I say, listen, if I say something wrong, tell me what I'm saying wrong. Because I want to be uh, inclusive in my knowledge, and I try to make sure that I understand what's going on. And sometimes I don't. I'm 57 years old. I'm disabled. I'm voting for the first time this year because my vote not only helps me, but it helps each and every one of you that's listening, that's in this chat room, that's commenting. My vote doesn't just help me. It helps you. It helps a child. It helps a mother. It helps a family that's, that's, that doesn't have a job or a good job or needs food put on their table from, from, uh, from uh, 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 school support, you know, for, for lunches. Okay. Got to go to a break, Jay. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir. All righty, folks. Uh, we come back. Clay Travis, sports writer, had some serious problems with uh, Colin Kaepernick's stance. He's supposed to call in. Y'all want to hear this. And we come back on the Roller Martin Show.
All right, y'all, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Kevin from North Carolina, what's your comment? Say he without sin cast the first stone. We don't see, uh, Hil excuse me, Hillary Clinton is a sinner. I'm a sinner. Trump is a sinner. But to, to, to Brother Pastor Mark, he doesn't realize that when I was young, my mama and daddy, they would let me go out, out in the yard and play with Hillary because of the things that we've heard in the media, what she has done. But for Donald Trump, for the sinful things, the morally sinful things he's done, my parents would not even let me step out in the house and play with that man. So that's my word, and I'm off the mic. All righty, Imani from England. You're on the Roland Martin Show. What's up, man? What's going on? All great. Yeah, um, this about the Colin Kaepernick thing. I want to. I have a question. Is it in his job description that he has to stand for the national anthem? No. Because I'm really wondering. Like, I mean, if this is America, and he has freedom of speech. Oh, I'm actually I'm, I'm in England. You know, living. In, I'm. I'm in England, live, um, being from New York, but if he's American and he, you know, like, is, isn't he exercising his First Amendment right? And isn't that what America is supposed to stand for? Okay. Well, and again, I mean, he can do what the hell he wants to do. I mean, so that, I mean, that's that's simple. That's simple. I mean, bottom line is. But again, no. So I can't hear you. Yeah, but, but but you're seeing the attacks on him. You're seeing the attacks on him. That to me is crazy. That is crazy. All right. Uh Monty, I can't hear you there. Okay, all right, so cool. Here we go. Um yeah. Uh, so, Imani, uh, try to give me a call back. I don't know what's going on there. All right, uh, let's see. Who's caller? Who are, what's your name? Where are you from? All right, well, Clay, this is Roland Martin. So, Colin Kaepernick uh, has got folks all upset, and they're angry. What I find to be interesting is that more people are upset because he's choosing to sit down and are totally ignoring why he is protesting. Well, I think his protest is, let me, let me take a step back. Um, first of all, there are protests that I believe are legitimate. Most of the time when you protest, you have a tangible goal in mind, right? So uh, if you think about athletes who historically have made protests, there is a tangible link to what they're doing and what they would like to see change. Such That's as? An example. Such as? Muhammad Ali. Like, I understand, you know, the decision. I ain't got no quarrel with the Viet Cong pretty straightforward right the guy didn't believe that we had a business being in the, involved in the war in vietnam and so he chose not to not to show up well well, 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 well straightforward today but he got the kind of vitriol back oh, then yeah. that was close that was i mean like, like, not the same but similar understood to people what he wanted to do though well no no right? well, what I'm, what I'm, what, well no no what i'm saying is well i, I want okay in hindsight we do but there are a lot of people who are who are sounding like Kaepernick critics today who were trashing Ali then. Oh, I'm not disagreeing that it was controversial, his decision, but I don't have a problem with controversial decisions. Look, I'm in the business of being controversial just to a certain extent like you are. And the way we're controversial is by giving our actual 100% unvarnished opinion. That's my goal in life. Like you can agree or disagree with me, but I'm not going to tiptoe up to my opinion. And so I appreciate that about Ali. And, in, in, and I wasn't alive, obviously, in 1968 or whatever year uh, that was taking place. But uh, what I'm saying is you understood exactly what he was opposing, right? And that there could be a tangible result of that that reflected that he was correct in that ultimately the Vietnam War was found to be an unjust, uh, unjust war. It, it's hard to know what it would have felt like to be involved in that situation in 1968. But looking at it now, I would have gone to Canada. Like, I, I, I feel the same way as Muhammad Ali. Like, the last thing I'm going to do is leave America and go walk around in a jungle and get shot at by a bunch of people I have no idea why they're shooting at. Like, that, that's not my, my cup of tea either. 
Uh, same thing with Bill Russell. Look, um, I am what I would call a uh, historically a moderate Democrat. Like, okay, I work to get Democrats elected um, in, in my political career. I've worked on the Hill um, and, and all of, of those aspects. And so I look at the federal government's job um, and when the days of Bill Russell and other athletes who were making stands in the 1960s as trying to create a, an, an arena where systemic racism does not exist. That is, the United States government is not explicitly discriminating based on the race of any individuals. And so all of the rights that people advocated for during the civil rights movement, the right to have vote, uh, the right to be able to actually vote, the right to be able to go into restaurants, sleep where you want, have equal treatment, are things that I think I support clearly, but also that you could understand what those athletes were supporting. When I go read what Colin Kaepernick is saying, he is generally opposed to situations that exist in the United States and says he will not stand for the national anthem until at some later date when he decides that the country is better than it is now. That, to me, is an entirely arbitrary protest that actually alienates more people than it allies on your side. But here's the deal, though. Here's the deal, though. Okay, so the, the point of protest is not consensus. The point of protest is not I need people to agree with me in that I'm doing. In fact, what I find to be interesting is this is one guy sitting down. I think people are making far more out of it than what it is. I think I think all these people. Oh my God! You're you're just shaming uh, our military. You're spitting in their face. I'm like, calm the hell down. So yeah, my question for you though would be this, and, and I, I'm genuinely interested in the answer. What when Colin Kaepernick says he will change his decision and 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 decide to uh, to stand when when the country makes decisions that he agrees with. What tangible things does he want to change that would lead him to believe that the national anthem is worth standing for? Ask him. I, I have. I mean, and so, I, and so here's the deal. And here's the deal, though. Here's the deal, though. Colin Kaepernick doesn't. He doesn't owe me an explanation. If if if, if, if See, I think once you, I, I, just, he, I guess he, no, 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 allow me a decision to sit. No, no, allow, if, wait, let me just. If, if you make the decision to sit, then you need to explain to me why you're doing that. And but he has. He, 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 no literally, that. he literally took 30 questions from journalists. Explain his position. LinkedIn. I mean, first of all, I played all of it 18 and a half minutes on my radio show. He explained it. My, I mean, I, I, I heard it. I disagree with, with what he explained. And so uh, that's what I'm asking you. What will, what does he require to change in order to not be remain seated during the national anthem? What Colin Kaepernick is talking about is what we are dealing with in this country. And that is when he's talking about oppression. When he's talking about, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. On, set, on Sunday, on Sunday, that, um, uh, we, we, we remember the 53rd anniversary of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, where Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. In that very speech, Dr. King talked about police brutality. In that very speech, he talked about giving Negroes the right to vote in Mississippi. Now, everybody loved the content of character, but they always love to ignore the top two-thirds of that speech. And so now we're dealing with, 53 years later, still police brutality. We're, we're still dealing with, we're still dealing with voter suppression, North Carolina, Texas, Wisconsin, Florida, Pennsylvania. I can go down the line. So, so no, 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 no. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't agree with what? black people. No, hold on. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I never said that. I never okay, said. So, no, no, no. But, 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 it, but is police brutality. How, how many cases are you seeing of white folks getting beat down by cops? I, I, I recall in Virginia, I, I recall in Virginia, I recall in Virginia when a white kid, I, I recall in Virginia when a white kid got choked by the cops, that cop was fired in less than 48 hours. You got. You just had the, the cop. The cop who killed Eric Garner, Clay. The cop who killed Eric Garner 
is still on the job. Still. Let me give you the stats. Uh, in the last two years, 73% of people shot and killed by police are white, Hispanic, or Asian. Okay. 27% are black. If you look at the statistics as a percentage of violent crime, Black people represent 13% of the United States population and are responsible for 51% of all murders. So here's my question. So, if you look so I say this, hold up, hold up, hold up like, I'm about to go to a break. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Literally, I'm going to break in 30 seconds. So you know, I want you to finish the point we come back. So I'm, I, I'm, I ask you, well, when are white folks going to stand up and say something about police brutality? I want you to answer that. I want you to answer that when we come back. Hold on, answer when we come back. Uh, for the Roland Martin Show, back in a moment. Call 844-736-7474 and talk to Roland Martin next. We'll be back. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037 so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey. Let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A covenant that split the skies over Berlin. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made. A solemn oath that liberated Seoul. A sacred trust that defended Quezon. A pact that dug in in Da Nang. A contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. A bond that patrolled door to door in Fallujah. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. A promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earned. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org.
It's time to get back to the issues that matter. Let's get back to the Roland Martin Show. All right, folks, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. I am talking about uh, the continued discussion over Colin Kaepernick, uh, of course, uh, the San Francisco 49ers quarterback uh, who has folks in such a tizzy because how dare he uh, sit down during the playing of the national anthem and people are all upset. You got folks burning jerseys. Now you got folks like Jerry Rice who... And then this is the weird, and I'm going to get to this in a second, but it's amazing to me all these players who say, I support your stance, but I disagree with your method. I'm going to read a quote from Dr. King about that very issue uh, in just a moment. So I'm talking to uh, Clay Travis, according to his Twitter bio, author of Dixieland Delight and On Rocky Top, writes for OutkickTheCoverage.com. So, um, so Clay, going to the break, I asked the question, okay. If whites are being impacted by police abuse, so are they trying to change the system? And if so, how? A unity involved in purpose as opposed to an exclusionary one. Let me explain what I mean by that. I think that many white people view Black Lives Matter activists as entirely focused on only one small sliver of improper action that takes place in this country, and that is typically when a white police officer shoots a black person, right? And I think when you look at the data, and I'm a data guy, the way to attack this is not by making police brutality a racial issue, but by making it an American issue. And so I think most people, reasonable people, would agree that it is not reflective of the ideals that we hold dear in this country to have a thousand people a year or some such be shot and killed by police. Now, 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 now you do know a violent you, country. You do know those folks are factually factually dead wrong because Black Lives Matter has protested the actions of black cops too. Correct. In Baltimore for instance. No, 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 not, not just Baltimore. I mean I mean other cities as well. So, and here's the other thing that I don't think whites in America understand. If you are gay and lesbian, and you are happy that you could get married because of the Supreme Court ruling, the Supreme Court made that decision based upon the Equal Protection Clause in the 14th Amendment. If you are Vietnamese, and then you are happy that your, that your uh, ballot uh, that you're voting for is in Vietnamese, that's the result of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, women, largely white women, greatly benefited from Title IX. Title IX was not meant about to be about sports. It was meant to open the professional schools up to women. So when you had this influx, no, 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 Clay, 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 Clay. I'm not saying you dispute, but let me lay it out here. So Title IX. So you have a lot of women, but a lot of white women who are doctors, who are dentists, who are lawyers were engineers as a result. So that's the provision of the Civil Rights Act of 64. Those who are disabled, American with Disabilities Act, same thing. Here's my point. Black folks fought for the 14th Amendment. Black folks fought for the Civil Rights Act of 64. Black folks fought for the Voting Rights Act of 65. Black folks fought for the Fair Housing Act of 68. But far more Americans have benefited from the fights of black folks. And so, if black, if black Lives Matter, if Black Lives Matter is fighting the issue of police accountability, not black folks aren't the only ones benefiting. White Americans, Hispanics, Asians, Native Americans will also benefit as well. Oh, okay, there's a shooting in, I believe, North Carolina uh, that has gotten virtually no media attention. Happened a couple of days ago. Uh, a deaf white guy was shot and killed by a black trooper. Uh, because supposedly, according to the story, the deaf white guy was sign languaging aggressively, not armed, absolutely no threat in theory to the police officer, black police officer shot in the building, uh, white guy. I haven't seen a single protest. I haven't seen a single act take place. Okay, so what? Okay, okay, so here's my question. Okay, all right, where? Happening for white, Hispanic, and Asian. But here's my point. So, so really what you're arguing, Clay, is white folks need to get off the couch 
and get out and protest? No, I mean, it, it's an interesting question. Like, why aren't white people more outraged given the fact that they're more likely to be killed as a percentage of overall uh, so, so, violent crime? So if that's the case, so that's the case, well, white folks shouldn't be upset that black folks are deciding to protest. If, the, if white folks are getting shot, uh, and white folks are getting beaten, white folks need to get in the game like black folks and then demand that level of change. Well, see, I don't see it as a racial issue, though. I'm but not, no, 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 no. I'm not saying it's a racial issue. But, but I think this, this is what I, but the way that the story has been covered, I think that it has immediately divided. Like, I think this is an interesting theory, right? I think social media actually serves to divide us more than it serves to unite us. And I think that's because everybody gets involved in these hashtag activism campaigns and they end up only surrounding themselves with people that they already agree with. Whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're white, black, Asian, Hispanic, you end up surrounded by ideas and opinions that you already hold dear. And then anytime anything happens in the world, you use that as an example to fulfill your already existing global universal view. Clay, did, did, have you ever attended any of the protests of Black Lives Matter? No, I, I haven't been. Do you know how many any any protest in in for any issue in in maybe do, yeah. do you know how many white folks were out there? Uh, I, I the first of all, just I can only judge it based on the uh, based on the videos that I've seen, and there are a decent number. No, 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 not decent. Out there, but I don't. Not not decent, Clay. A lot. I mean, I, I'm not decent. I'm talking about a lot. I have been covering this since day one and this is the piece that i think and see so maybe your criticism is with mainstream media but i can tell you in black media i can tell you what we've been covering and the fact of the matter is this here there are a significant number of white americans who see black lives matter and they say that's an injustice and the thing for me is this here and this is very interesting to me how again we look at this here you talked about well I should look at this race. Do you recall the current commission report? I didn't hear the first word. Do you recall the current commission report? No, I have no idea what the current commission is. Current commission, first of all, one, one of the one of the most important uh, commissions in the history of the country. President Lyndon Baines Johnson appointed the commission after the race riots uh, in sixty six and sixty seven. The current commission came back with their report in sixty eight, and the current commission said point blank. There are two Americas, one black, one white. They also criticize the national media for the lack of African Americans working in these outlets. It's an, ama it's, it's, it's an extensive report. And the reality is this here. And I know we, we love to say, well, you know, we should look at things about race. But the reality is this is still America where race is in our DNA. And so the reality is we do look at things differently. African Americans might look at it differently. And I would argue that if whites, well, it, cause I've heard whites say, well, more whites have been shot and killed by cops than blacks. Okay, say something. Do something. But the history of black folks has been well, since 1619 I, I fighting for full freedom. I believe the vast majority of people who've been shot by police were threat to the police. So I Based on what? Thousand people. Based on the reports that I read. Okay, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. You I said the reports. Trust, I trust what what reports? Michael Brown. What reports? Michael Brown. Okay, hold up. Okay, how about okay, okay, that's one. So that's the one. Um let's talk about I believe that as hold on, that's one. I've been involved in these in these situations. What else? I believe that the state and then the Justice Department investigates these situations and determines whether or not there should be charges brought. But 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 but, but, but Clay, but Clay, Clay, you do realize that part of the problem is that our laws have stacked the deck against, uh, have stacked the deck for police. So, for instance, see, you said Michael Brown. Uh, I, I think I think the number one protector of black lives in America is the police. I don't think there's a close second. Okay, let me. No, actually, the number one protector of black. No, no, the number one protector of black lives in America have been black mamas and daddies. That's number one. Because black mamas and daddies are the ones who have to have the conversation with their children about dealing with the cops. So the number one protect... I, I think, first of all, that's a ludicrous conversation to have. You're more like... Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. No, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. It's not... No, no, no. You just gave credit as the number one protector of black lives police. 
I'm saying no, number one protector of black lives are black parents. My, I mean, my, my, my mama. I think that's a, that's a totally. That's a no, no, it's, no, 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 no. But, but, no, so, but, but, so you, you want to. All children are the number one responsible caregivers of all children. Well, 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 well don't say the cops is number one then. But here's the whole point. The cops, the cops are number one who are not related by blood or biology or any other. Okay, they well. The number one protector of black lives in America. But here's the deal. Here's the deal that we also have to contend with. And that is here. Because you said, I trust the reports. Okay, I'm going to hold that one when we come back from the break. Because I want you to answer this, the trusting of the reports. And why black folks, Clay, aren't as trusting of the reports as you are. Folks, we're talking about Colin Kaepernick, uh, injustice in America, the fight for freedom in America. And when we come back, I'm going to read that Dr. King quote about the silence of white moderates. This is the Roland Martin Show. Back in a moment. Somebody said, can you let Clay talk? I'm letting Clay talk. I mean... Back in two minutes. All right, folks, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. We're talking about uh, Colin Kaepernick, how he's got folks just all upset, outraged, and mad because he made a decision himself to sit down during the national anthem. I'm talking with uh, Clay Travis, author of Dixieland, Delight, and On Rocky Top. He's a writer at OutkickTheCoverage.com. Uh, Clay, Chicago Tribune reported 
uh, six police officers being investigated uh, over giving false testimony in court, where they were even called out uh, by the judge. Even the DAs were lying in court. Uh, the superintendent there has talked about firing eight police officers uh, for lying on their police reports. Uh, we saw the guy, the officer who has been charged with murder uh, in, the, in Walter Scott, uh, in that particular case, uh, that particular uh, officer involved, uh, Michael Schlager, lied on his police report. Uh, we have any number of other stories as well. And it's very interesting that you have cops who will back each other up to protect one another. And so for a lot of African Americans, when we hear these stories of, oh, he was making a move, oh, my life was in danger, folks question that because a lot of cops have routinely lied and gotten away with it. Well, look, I, look, as a lawyer, I can tell you that people lie in court all the time. Uh, and I always say that the more you have to lose, the more likely you are to lie. So, look, I understand skepticism of, of the legal statements in general. Uh, and that, by the way, goes for people who are uh, allegedly being shot uh, or, or arrested. Like, uh, nobody in prison has ever done it, right? Like, I've, I've been a jailhouse lawyer. I've gone in there. But, but, I get to walk in and talk to a client who said, you know what, they got me, I did it. But do you believe... The criminal justice system is perfect. That's why I don't support the death penalty. Do you believe uh, there... I think do you believe there's... A level of perfection. Do you believe there's a blue wall of silence? Do you believe there is a code of silence? I don't think, I don't think there's a code of silence. I think that there are some bad cops, just like wow. there are some bad doctors, just like there are some bad lawyers, just like there are some bad engineers. I think it's a small percentage. Clay, um, I have had... If you look at the shooting... But Clay, I literally have had police chiefs, sergeants, commanders, beat cops in multiple cities say there is indeed a blue wall. Well, I think when they when they use the phrase blue wall, I think in general people are more likely to support other people who have their job, just like teachers fight for other teachers, even though everybody who knows has ever been in a school knows that in general there are good teachers and bad teachers. But a and teacher the the union in general, but the a te the union in general is not to defend the people who are good. No, it's but, the but a teacher doesn't have a gun and a teacher can't kill somebody or beat a confession out of somebody and lock them up in prison unjustly. That's the difference. I, the, way, the reason I look at this is when you learn about police brutality, I like to go to the actual numbers. And again, the, the odds of being a victim of police brutality in this country today are infinitely lower than your odds of, for instance, being, uh, being struck by lightning. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is unheard of, like, rarity. And I think what the media does is it sensationalizes incidents, which may or may not be... Uh, justified in terms of police action and makes us believe that we're in much more danger than we actually are. Here's the perspective for you. You are 42 times as likely to die in a car accident as you are to be shot by a police officer in this country. Everybody right now driving around listening to you in their car or podcast or wherever they are is infinitely more likely to die in their car driving around than they are ever to be uh, the victim of police brutality. I want to circle back. So does that mean we don't protest it? No, it means that it's rare. And what but, I'm but, I mean, but, but, it is so incredibly rare. And here's the other thing that a lot of people say, and I think they have some accuracy to it. If you eliminated every death that occurs at the hands of black people by other races, do you know what percentage of, of murders you would eliminate? 93% of all black people who are murdered in this country are murdered by other black people. What's the percentage of, hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. What's the percentage 84% of, of white people are murdered by white people. Okay, so, and, and so what does that tell you? That people typically when they get murdered, it's in their own community, correct? 100%, and that's what okay. I'm saying. So, so, but, but, no, no, but, 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 but I agree with this point. Let me, let me just finish this. I think that there is, in this country today, a lot of money to be made off of fear. I think Donald Trump is running his entire campaign based on it. I think the Black Lives Matter activists and Donald Trump's most fervent supporters actually have a lot in common 
in that they are both being sold a bill of goods. It is that fear should govern their actions. But that's a lie. And I think the media. A, a, okay, how, how many black lives? The media makes a lot. How, let me question, ask you a question. How many Black Lives Matter activists have you actually talked to? I uh, talked to in person. I don't know. I mean, I have a, I have a show too, but no, no, no. I'm, okay, no. Okay, no, no. By Black Lives okay, Matter how many Black Lives Matter activists have you interviewed on your show? Uh, none. Okay. No, okay. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. So, I, I'm, I'm gonna let you. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. I also haven't interviewed a single Donald Trump supporter on my show either. Okay, but here's so, so, yeah, but the, Donald Trump supporter yeah, or Black Lives Matter. But, activists. but see, no, but, but when they're you both motivated by fear. But, no, but see, but when you haven't even bothered to even see, I've done both. I have talked to Trump supporters. I have talked to Black Lives Matter activists. I have talked to individuals who are who have been in the meetings with the president in the Oval Office, uh, who have been meeting with police chiefs, meeting with mayors, Attorney General Loretta Lynch. And what you're saying is a flat out lie. And so you're basing it, you're not even basing it on, you're not even basing it on fact. You're not even basing it on actual, you're not basing it on any, okay, okay. Just like Donald Trump supporters, the most ardent ones, are terrified of things that are changing in this country. Play. They're both motivated by fear. You're basing an opinion on virtually on nothing. So if, if you went into court, okay, you're a lawyer, right? Yeah. If you if you went in if no, hold up if you went into court and presented that argument with nothing to substantiate it other than I heard or I think a judge would say Clay sit down a, a jury a jury was a, a jury would smack you down a jury would smack you down. Hundred percent agree with me. Rolling in a court, the judge's job is to analyze the law that you present. You can have any theory of the case that you want on earth, and the theory of the case is based on your opinion of what the facts suggest. My opinion is that uh, Donald Trump's supporters and the Black Lives Matter supporters are basically the same people except in different color skin. They are terrified of a world that doesn't actually exist. That is, they are not in danger. They are not likely to be killed by police. Trump supporters are not likely to be killed, dragged from their cars, and murdered by minorities in the city. And... The media, which I think is the worst part of it all, the media propagates this myth because fear sells and drives rage. So, Clay, so, so you don't actually look at the data. The data don't support that the country is more dangerous today Clay, than it was in 2016. Clay, folks like, no, but, but Clay, folks like you suggested that racial profiling just didn't exist. Didn't exist. Racial profiling doesn't exist. I no, don't no. know where that where that sentence would come from. No, 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 no. Here's no, no. Here's my point. No, no. Because see, you keep talking about somebody being killed by a cop. There are there are communities, whole communities in this country, where literally, literally, individuals are accosted, are stopped, are harassed. Uh, I mean, and what happens? What happens when police pull out of those communities? No, 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 wait, 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 no, no, stop right, wait a minute, hold up, see, right here, this, this, this is, this is the fundamental problem, see, this is the problem, fundamental problem with your argument, see, you go, I talk about communities being harassed, and you go, but if the cops pull out, people die, how about if the cops, no, 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 allow me to finish, I will let you finish, I will let you finish, allow me to finish, if the cops did not harass somebody unnecessarily, they don't mean they gotta pull out. It means don't harass people who aren't doing anything. Roland, my position on this would be, and I'm not a criminal expert, but based on what uh, police have done to re reduce crime in this country, it's the broken window theory, right? The best way to reduce crime, it turns out, is not to just go after people when you're trying to solve a murder, it's to figure out what's going on in communities when they have these broken windows. And so the best way to protect the lives, black lives, Hispanic lives, white lives, Asian lives, wherever there is a high crime community, is proactive policing. Got a question, no, 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 got a question for you. Which newspaper? I believe what we've seen in these communities where black lives activists have become the most active is they've actually led to hundreds of more black people being dead because the police have not been able to do their normal. No, no, no. See, no, no, no. See, it's not, it's not, 
It's not the police play. It's not that the police have not been able to do their job. It's that the police do not desire, want, or accept accountability. The New York Daily News recently, just two weeks ago, apologized and they wrote an editorial saying, headline, the New York Daily News admits that they were wrong for fear-mongering over the end of stop and frisk. The problem, Clay, in this country is that cops don't like it when they are held accountable. That's a problem. So why do you think, I'm curious, why do you think a cop becomes a cop? Oh, first of all, there are different people wanting to become cops. Some people, and I've talked to a lot of them, some people become cops because they do believe in protect and serve. Some people become cops, and there are numerous studies showing these individuals who uh, were the people who were picked on in high school, and so now you got some egomaniacal folks with a badge and a gun. You have numerous studies that show the propensity of police officers also being involved in domestic abuse cases as well. So let's, let's don't act like every cop is in it for the right reasons. The reality is this here. Anybody, any, no profession has people who are all in it for the right reasons. I believe this here. I believe this here, point blank, Clay. Do you believe I believe in the count. percentage of cops do you think are bad? First of all, I'm not going to give you a percentage because I deal with facts. And what I deal with is here. But I, I, I'm not, first of all, you don't deal with facts. Actually, I do. Because, see, I'm not going to say, I'm not, no, I'm not going to so give you. Think that you think that you don't even give me a percentage? No, because I'm not going to. I think 99% of cops are good at what they do and are trying to do the right thing every day. <laughs> you disagree with that? You think it's a lot more, a lot less than 99%? Clay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to the funeral of a family member or a friend who was unjustly killed? I've been shot at, Roland. No. Have been shot at? No. no. I'm asking you a question. 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 Uh, I, ever been with somebody who's been unjustly killed? Yeah. I went to my grandfather's funeral, and I think he had such bad, such a bad doctor that they killed him. Okay. That's a doctor. I'm talking about my cops. And let me tell you something. When you've had, when you had that experience, when you've had to go to that funeral, you're not sitting there going, well, you know, 99% of them are pretty good. You're going... No, but I would probably be thinking, if somebody got shot by the cops, they probably did something wrong. See, well, there you go. Well, the fact of the matter is, John Crawford was on a cell phone at a Walmart in Beaver Creek, Ohio, with an air gun sold by Walmart in a state that was open to carry, and he's dead right now because somebody caused, oh, a black man's waving a gun, and the cops came in guns blazing, and they all got off. 73% of people shot rolling. Well, guess what? Tell John Crawford's family that, Clay. I got to go to a break. This is Roland Martin Show back in a moment. 736-7474. And talk to Roland Martin next. We'll be back. Can you tell if the surfaces in this kitchen are crawling with bacteria that could cause chronic arthritis? Listen. can't, can you? You can't see it either. Wash surfaces, utensils, and hands frequently with soapy water while preparing food, especially when handling raw meats or eggs. Raw food may contain bacteria Did that can make you very sick ever or worse. Quote me, six Americans will get Did I sick say all blacks are angels? Year, and roughly 3,000 will mm, die. Don't try that with but me. But you can keep your family safer by cleaning with soap and water as you go. Learn more about this and other important information. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. That's foodsafety.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ag Council. Hey, there he is. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand or what? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. Are you okay? I'm having a stroke. Your face looks weird too. I'm having a stroke. Are you having a seizure or something? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. I'm having a stroke. 
You just need to know the sudden signs. Look for FAST, F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. Or S, speech difficulty. Then T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Know the sudden signs. Face, arm, speech, time. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. It's time to get back to the issues that matter. Let's get back to the Roland Martin Show. All right, folks, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. Let's be our final segment uh, with uh, Clay uh, Travis. Clay, Black Lives Matter, we've seen upwards of 40 new laws passed in 24 states in the past 18 months. We've seen a dramatic expansion of body cameras by police departments. Do you believe that all police officers should wear body cameras? Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, it's Clay. All right, Clay, go ahead. Do you believe that all police officers should wear body cameras? Uh, yes, although my issue in general with body cameras is that a lot of times they don't work. So I think relying entirely on body cameras, given the fact that officers are moving rapidly and everything else. Moreover, again, because I tend to trust police more than you do, uh, I think that a lot of times body cameras can get police in trouble when they're being too lenient. Question for you. How, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to stay on body cameras. Because, because uh, first of all, you and what you have here is you have Boston police uh, don't want to wear body cameras, uh, and they, the union probably even sue. But here's what's interesting, okay? Because uh, Rialto, California, Rialto, California, uh, one of the early adopters of body cameras. This is what they discovered. They discovered in 12 months there was a 53 percent drop in the number of use of force incidents against cops, civilian complaints against cops saw a 65% decline. What they discovered, and this is done by a report released of the University of South Florida, that uh, they also, University of South Florida, I'm sorry, instead of the Atlanta Police Department, these are their numbers. Rialto, California, they saw a 70 plus percent drop. What, so what they discovered is that body cameras actually have benefited the police and the citizens because it came down to accountability. And so we have this case of, well, believe the cop. If the cameras are working, why not wear the camera? They're wearing, they got walkie-talkies. They've got badges and guns and nightsticks. I don't know very many people who would oppose more adequate 
opportunities to observe actual interaction because historically eyewitness testimony is some of the least reliable testimony that exists. But the cops are so in, in Boston, in Boston, they are right now, the city of Boston, they are they are signing 100 body cameras as part of their pilot program because the police union said nobody volunteered to wear it. That's what they're doing. So you have other places where police officers, oh, no, 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 I don't want that, where you have in Chicago breaking of the antennas, where you have in New Orleans where they had dash cam uh, cameras, where they were turning the cameras off. So cities are saying, wait a minute. No, I'm gonna ask you a question. Like, I'm just gonna ask you a question. Look, my opinion is cameras are fine. Like I don't think it's I don't think it's that confusing. Okay, that's fine. Let me also ask you a question. If a police officer, you're a lawyer, if a police officer lies on a police report, should they be fired? Yes, if they can be proven to lie. But as a lawyer, I understand how difficult it is to prove a lie. Well, so, I, well, I can take police reports in general are opinion based reports. And, and guess what? Because of cameras. The reason the superintendent in Chicago wants to fire eight officers involved in the death of Laquan McDonald because they flat out lied. And when that video showed it, they went, uh oh. Okay, let me ask you this though, Roland. Why, general question 94% of all murders of black people are done by black people. If you eliminated every inappropriate, improper, illegal shooting that ever existed in the history of police, in recent history, it would nowhere near approach the number of black people that are going to be killed this year by other black people. And you do so, and, and, of all the things to focus on, even if the police, let, let's say you eliminate every racial killing that exists by anybody else other than black people, 94% of black people would still be dying. That is what a lot of people circle back around to on here. It's like you're uh, opposed to the topping on a cake when the entire cake is made of feces. And that's where, and, and that's where you are, and that's where you and other people are so wrong. Because this is what I understand. And, may, and have you ever read Chaos or Community? Where we go from here? The last book of Dr. King. You ever read that? No. You, you really, you, you really. Taylor Brand. You, you want to know about the civil rights movement? First of all, no, 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 no. Nothing ever written no, about civil rights Well, actually, for, first of all, let me be real clear. I've interviewed Taylor Branch, and Taylor Branch would not say it was the best thing written by the civil rights movement because Taylor Branch would say the best thing written by the civil rights movement is written by the individuals who actually were in it. So, I mean, and I, and, well, for, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're disagreeing with the guy who you are touting with the author. I talked to the guy. I've actually talked to him. But he's being he's being modest. No, 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 actually, no. Actually, he's not actually he's not being modest. He's being very real. But here's my whole point. Here's my whole point. 67, Dr. King writes his book, Chaos or Community, Where Do We Go From Here? And he talks about the conditions that have put us in the situation. He talks about housing, he talks about jobs, he talks about education. See, you at you think that I don't deal with uh the violence in black communities. Oh yes, I do. But what I also deal with is I deal with what creates that. And so I don't just sit here and only discuss Black Lives Matter. See, when I live in Chicago, I organize a thousand black men to meet at the House of Hope, the church of the Reverend, uh, Reverend James, Reverend Dr. James Meeks, to deal with this particular issue. I did that on WBO. No, 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 but wait a minute. I'm simply making a point here. You. No, no, I'm making the point here. You, I'm making the point here. See, you, you are only mentioning murders taking place. What I am mentioning is the condition and the causes that contribute to that. And what I'm asking, what I'm saying is, when other people say that, they are in denial about those conditions. I, the conditions are, are, are fascinatingly interesting, right? My position actually, the, the, actually, the conditions are sad. On this is pretty simple, right? They're sad. Most people who make bad decisions choose to make bad decisions. I believe in Clay, right it is not even remotely that simple. Not even remotely. Do, 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 do you? Have the, every individual in America today has the right to make the decisions that they so choose. Clay, do you understand? Do you understand communities that are economically depressed 
for decades. Do you actually understand that? Again. Yes or no? Do you no no? Do I ask you? Do you first of all you want you wanted me to guess you wanted me to you wanted me to guess on bad cops? I'm asking you a question. Do you even do you understand the conditions in communities? In inner city Nashville at Martin Luther King Magnet High School. Okay, you okay you, you oh hold on stop 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 hold up. You went to a magnet school. Hold up. No, so when you, you, my point is, that, do you understand? So you telling me you live in an economically depressed area that's been that way for decades? For the last nine years. So that's where you live? I live in inner city, I lived in inner city Nashville. Okay. On, off Jefferson Street, if you know Nashville at all. And, uh, so, and, so, and so, what's the poverty rate in, on your census tract? In my, in my neighborhood? What's the poverty rate in your census tract? I don't know. I don't know the, the statistics, but I mean, you can look up Jefferson Street. I mean, North Nashville, literally the heart of Black Nashville. And and and, and, and what I'm saying, and, and what I'm saying, and what I'm saying is this: the conditions in communities that have been economically depressed. You're, you're, what, Roland, you're making excuses. No, I'm not. I'm ci- no, no. I'm citing facts. I am actually citing facts. Okay, all right. See, no, no, no. See, here's the difference between me and you, Clay. Clay, you love, you want to be in a position where you can frame an argument without the basis of facts and just say, well, my perspective. What I'm talking about, I am talking about literally, I'm talking about being somebody who is black, who who, who grew up in a neighborhood, who grew up in soft conditions, and who understood that it goes beyond just well, you you just you the individual. I understand the impact of others around, and all I'm saying, Clay, you might want to spread your wings a little bit and talk to more people because you need some more information, brother. I guess living in a black neighborhood and going to a school named after a black civil rights leader hasn't given me enough opportunity. No, you need, but no, you need a hell of a lot more. You do, you really do. Cause guess, cause guess what? I guess what? I can go to a Hispanic school where they speak Spanish. Don't mean I can. Why, why did your boy call him Kaepernick? I wanted to ask you this. Yeah, first of all, he's not my boy. I don't know him. You, you're a politics guy, right? Go ahead. Why did he wear? Advising Colin Kaepernick to make this statement about not standing up for the national anthem. Real? What would you have said if he had told you he was going to wear a Castro shirt to go talk to the media? First of all, guess what? You a grown man. It's called consequence of your actions. I uh, know you got to go for, do a radio interview. I got to go pay some bills. I'll be back on the Roland Martin Show. Well, in all seriousness, I'm happy to come on whenever you want. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it again. Thanks so much. Tap on break. Back on the Roland Martin Show in a moment. Appreciate it. Call 844-736-7474 and talk to Roland Martin next. We'll be back. All right, y'all. I got e. I got ten minutes left in the show. Y'all can call right now. I'm going through phone lines right now. 844-736-7474. 844-736-7474. Call right now. 844-736-7474. Really, y'all complaining? The volume for Clay was low. It's a it's a speaker, really, really. Stop it! Stop making excuses. Let your guests talk. Mm, how about you just answer questions? Just saying. Just saying. No, you're screaming. Well, actually, it's called talk radio. And we call that thing passion.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Roland Martin Show. Let's get right to the phone line. I need your comments to be quick and fast because we're going to zoom through them. Roosevelt, Jackson, Mississippi, what's your comment? Be an attorney. He really needs to be disbarred. He doesn't mm -hmm. listen, and all he does is spew out unfounded facts. Well, first of all, I mean, disbarred has nothing to do with that. This, this wasn't in a court, a, a court room or anything along those lines. He did nothing unethical, but that's just simply uh, a debate. So uh, I got it. Thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Rico in Atlanta. Rico, you're on the Roland Martin Show. Rico, where you at? Okay, Rico, you're late. Josh, Tennessee. Josh, you're on the Roland Martin Show. Yeah, well, so since you didn't let Clay talk, I was going to see what, why you thought it was okay for Kaepernick to sit down uh, during the anthem and then wear a Fidel Castro shirt afterwards. Because both he can. Because he because he can. He doesn't have to stand up. Yeah, why is that okay, though? Because, because he can. All right. Because just like... If he wants to, because he no can. No one's saying he can't do it, though. No one's saying he can't, but they're asking why he would do that. Because he why are, okay? in, in an 18 and a half minute interview, he explained why he did it. Go well, back. He didn't explain anything. Go, he didn't actually, even know what actually, 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 was. actually, he did. Go back and listen. He did. I did go back and listen and read the uh, manu or the transcript of it. He didn't even understand what black hit indictment meant. So why would he understand what he's talking about? They asked him why he did Josh, it. Josh, because he, he chose, because it. Josh, he gave his answer. And so, if you don't like his answer, fine. Ooh, something's ha happened. Looks like I had a crash. Y'all, hold on. Y'all, hold on. System just crashed on me. So, I got to, uh... Yep. <clears throat> well, no, actually, y'all, stuff happens. System crashed. No, no, you're fine here. What I'm saying is the radio system here crashed. <clears throat> so, just hold on. No, I didn't hack. I know exactly what it is. Y'all, I'm okay. I'm fine. Everybody calm down. All right, folks, Roland's back. Uh, do you guys hear me back? Um, uh, let's see here. So I am back uh, connected. We were having some issues here. Uh, so glad to be back. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Rico in Atlanta, are you finally there? Okay, Rico's not there. Uh, Vaughn in Phoenix, what's your comment? For Vaughn Willis. Vaughn, go. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for enduring that long conversation with Clay mm. because one of the things that really needs to happen, um, not just for the black community, but especially for the, for the white community, is they need to understand, they need to understand more about the conditions that creates the statistics they love to bring up. They love bringing up how 92% of, of uh, murders that happen to black people are at the hands of black people, but they always ignore the conditions that bring about that, uh, that particular statistic. And they also conveniently ignore the fact that 84% of of uh, murders that take place in the white community are at the hands of white people. And um, I can't remember his name. I think it was Eric. Um, I can't remember his name, but all I know is he said that it ought to be called proximity murder and not not black on black crime or white on black crime because people in their own <laughs> neighborhoods are the ones that killing each other. But I think that there is a strong, um, or no, there's a very uh, weak value 
for the conditions that, that creates these uh, <coughs> situations. And, um, I, you know, if, if you would maybe help uh, present more information, not only to the black community and the white community, about what's creating those conditions, because I personally would like to be able to articulate that myself. Because okay. when you're living in it, it, it's not the easiest thing to articulate. Okay, I got it. Thanks a lot, Bon. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Uh, Kevin in New York. Kevin, you're on the Roller Martin Show. Yeah, hello? Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, Roller, thank you. Um, listen, man, I just wanted to say that, you know, out of everything that we suffered at the hands of, um, you know, these rogue policemen, uh, Donald Trump's talking about building a wall around Mexicans. Tell Donald Trump that he should build a wall around black people. That way, we ain't got to deal with none of these crazy white men with their, uh, uh, their, their, their vicious, violent attacks against us. It, it, it's about time that we just really just start separating away from them so that way they don't have to worry about us with our watermelon, our chicken, our rap music, and whatever else that they don't like about us. Because we keep fighting to force these people to change who they are. They're not going to change who they are. They never change who they are. And it just gets even worse and worse and worse. So All right. let's just separate from them next. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, Tamika, Mississippi, you're on the Roller Martin Show. What's your comment? The only comment that I have, hi, Roland, how are you? I'm great. Go ahead. The comment that I have for you is I really appreciate that you mm -hmm. always, always research before you talk to every individual that you talk to. I really appreciate that. That's my comment. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, let's see wow. here. 844-736-7474. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, this is Dina in New York. Okay, go ahead. You know, you left out of the argument, Roland, which was very glaring, that um, housing covenant and redlining and the lack of access to bank loans and all of that as a matter of public policy was why black communities and low income or disadvantaged areas were created in the first place. No, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that, but my, my, I was aware, my, my point is. I was aware of that. Well, no, first of all, he wasn't, he, he wasn't even aware. He was yeah. He wasn't aware of some. He's talking about he lives in an economically disadvantaged area, and if he does as an attorney, then that means that he's gentrifying that area as a white attorney. He's not in there because he's poor, you know, and, and so, you know he's he's trying to to flip the whole situation on his head as opposed to looking at why he's actually living in that area at this point because that area is being gentrified okay you know and, and and to make it seem like you know those areas just came up as a matter of course no they became came about as a matter of public policy which is what colin is actually talking about what his protest is about is public policy and why it is that none of these policies within police training within uh police policies within laws have, have actually been focused in and changed. That's what he's talking about. Got it. So this is part of the argument. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Real quick, uh, name, where you're from, go. Real quick. Okay. Sorry, folks. So here's the deal. We're out of time. Folks, I, I got to go. Uh, I will uh, chat with you guys tomorrow. It has been real. Thank you so very much for everybody who is on Facebook, who's on listening to the radio stations, uh, people who are on Facebook or who are on uh, who are on Periscope. Thank all of you. Also want to thank the folks uh, on our podcast. Y'all, if you want to play back the conversation, go to iTunes, download the Roland Martin Show podcast, and you can hear the whole show, individual conversations. We got all of it. You don't want to miss it, so please do so. Again, thanks for everybody for checking this out. Uh, and so go get that podcast. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Roland S. Martin, Instagram at Roland S. Martin. Go check me out on my Facebook page as well. All right, I got to go. Y'all have a great, great day. This is Roland Martin Show. Peace! <clears throat> you need to hit a book. Read a book, read a book. Bye, people. I'm on the one, one two o'clock train in New York. Holla.